Hey, what's up guys? My name is Christian and I am back with another Pro Tools video and I've been wanting to do this for a while. Um, I'm going to try and go over some of the basics of Pro Tools and just kind of, I want to build a series on Pro Tools, um, at least the beginnings of it, right? Um, kind of like a um, an intro course, if you will. Um, I've always had a passion to kind of do this. I, I, I mean, I play music in my free time. I'm a guitar player, but I really do enjoy mixing and editing and recording uh, much more. Uh, I find enjoyment in, in making audio sound good, whether it's a, a vocal track or if it's an entire band. And uh, I think Pro Tools, learning how to use it, is a is a good kind of session a good series to kind of get into and i wanted to be able to provide uh you with that today so as you can see i have my pro tool session open here and there's two main windows within pro tools we're going to operate in and this is going to be the edit window and the mix window and as you can see here we're in the edit window right here this is where all our tracks are made visible via waveform you can see um, and then the mix window I'm on a Mac by the way so if you hit command equals shortcut number one command equals will take you to your mix window and this just kinda breaks it down you breaks down your session to make it look more like an analog board um, you have each channel strip right here right you have your inserts you have a send you have your in and outputs you have your fader right here you have a a solo button, a mute button, your record enable button, and your pan knobs here. Um, so uh, this is a multi-track session that I created based off of a song um, that is uh, widely known within like contemporary Christian music. Um, and I decided to do uh, from the ground up a multi-track uh, cover of it. And um, so this is the session that we have here. And just to kind of go over uh, everything within Pro Tools, I thought it'd be easier just to pull up a session so I can see multiple things at once. Um, so let's kind of start from the top, right? So from the top, we kind of have these tools right here. We have our trim tool, our selector tool, and our grabber tool. And each one, we'll go over each one, but if you collect, if you select right let's say the grabber tool and go to a track and click the mouse it'll select whatever track that you're working with right that's purely the function of it if we go over here to our selector tool you'll see that the hand changes into that little uh, selector shape right the little eye shape and then you can actually select within the session what section you want to go to right and then next is the trimmer tool right here and you can see the icon changed again from a bracket shape right and this just allows you to trim your tracks now what I like to do when I'm in Pro Tools is if you select right above those three it highlights all three of them so you can utilize all three if you want right so for example, now that I have all three selected, I can actually go into the track and I can select. If you go towards the end, you can trim and then you can also select all of it using the selector tool uh, or the grabber tool. And so having this highlighted, being able to use all three to me is just a lot faster. Um, if you come over here, this is kind of your tracks listing. So this just kind of shows you what tracks you have in your session, right? We have a couple acoustic guitar tracks. We have a couple electric guitar tracks, uh, an electric lead. We have a bass track. We have a kick in, kick out, all the drum. We have a couple pads. We have a piano track, a couple piano tracks. We have band cues, a click track, and we have some sort of other click track right here. And so this just kind of shows you what tracks are within your session. And you can actually hide tracks by clicking these little gray bubbles right here. So if we go to the very top, this is our acoustic track right here, our first acoustic track. If you click that little gray bubble, see how it hides it? 
it doesn't take it out of the mix. I mean, I theoretically you could mute it and then click this bubble and hide it. All right. So this allows you to for a more cleaner uh, way of, of editing your tracks in your process. So if I'm editing the drums, for instance, but I don't want to uh, see everything else, I can actually hide everything but the drums. But when I hit play, so you can hear the entire track still but you could also just see the drums only. And that's the purpose of these bubbles, is essentially just hiding the track. Um, so that's your track list, and we could just pull this over. If you want to get completely rid of it, you can just do this arrow right here. I like having it open though, because it also shows your groups right here. If you notice these group tracks, we have all, which is created by default. And if you select all, it's going to select your entire session, all the tracks that you have. However, if you notice my drums, I have a group for drums. When I hit select, it only selects my drums. This is a separate track that I have that didn't get put into that group, but you could tell, right? So let's select uh, electric guitars, for instance. Now if I select electrics, it's going to select all my electric guitars. This is a great way to also, uh, you never, you never want to mix with all selected. Because if you try to, for example, if you have all selected and you want to mess with the electric guitars, it's going to bring everything else down. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's bringing everything else down. Um, and so that's the purpose of groups. Um, a, a way to create a group is by hitting Command G, and then you can select. Let's actually select, let's say drums, right? So click on your first drum track, hold Select, or actually Shift, and then click, and you should have all of these selected right here. Command G currently in group right we have right here that's everything including drum mix you can name it whatever you want so we'll do drums let's say two for the sake of demonstration and when you hit OK you'll see it creates it down here so if we click the original drums you can see it doesn't select the drum mix right if we hit drums two now it selects what we created just now. And that's how groups work. Groups is, will become your best friend for sure when you are uh, editing. Um, and I usually create groups for every single kind of groups of tracks that I know I have. If you have multiple pads, um, you'll have an entire drum kit. It all depends on your session, of course, but uh, groups will be your best friends. Uh, if we navigate over here, we can see our clips list. And our clips list also just kind of shows us uh, what is being used within our uh, session here. And uh, so this is just, you can actually preview them too. If you hold the option, you can see how the icon changes from the mouse to the uh, kind of speaker icon there. And then you can select whatever it's bolded. It has to be bold, not these regular ones, but these bold ones. You can actually uh, preview them, right? Uh, so that's very cool. So we'll get rid of that. I usually keep this kind of closed. Um, it all depends on your liking, of course. Um, so again, command equals, right? And if we look in the mix window, we have inserts. This is where you're going to put in your plugins, things such as EQs, um, you know, compressors, all that good stuff. This is where your processing chain can start. Um, sends, the sends section on each channel allows you to send that particular track to another place, right? Um, so for example, you see this reverb track here, right? I have it outputting to one and two, 
and the input I chose bus and then I chose uh, well, this is 5 6 this would be uh, 7 8 9 and 10 but I renamed it verb for reverb and then anything that I wanted reverb on I sent to that track right and so you can kind of see it here Um, another thing that we have, uh, we mentioned earlier, is the pan knobs. So you can pan. So I usually like having the, uh, the uh, hi-hat panned. You can pan it left. I always mix my drums in mono, and then I just kind of pan how I like them. Right? So floor tom, I usually try to go as if I'm viewing the kit from an audience perspective. So I may pan the floor tom a little this way and the rack tom a little this way, right? Overheads, I always have uh, left and right, hard left and right, right here. Um, we have two kick drums, I usually keep that center, bass I usually keep center. Electric guitars, you can you know, pan however you want them, but those are the function of those knobs right there. Um, if you come down here, you can actually change the name here. And if you hold the command button and go to the left and right arrows, you can actually toggle between tracks. So you can see acoustic intro, acoustic two, electric, so on and so forth, right? I already have them named. But that's how you toggle between tracks. So if you are creating a track and you're in your name, or if you have a bunch of tracks created rather and you're naming them, then you, that's the fastest way, command arrow, to kind of sort through all those without having to you know hit OK click the next one name it hit OK click the next one now you could just name it whatever you need to name it command arrow right so that's how you do that uh, this little gray box right here you can actually write comments in so uh, we could write like Christian's acoustic guitar and then you can have these little notes in here and it might be useful for when you're editing when you're mixing and things like that um, if right here is your track color, so if you double click that, you can have all these colors pop up and you can actually change the color of your tracks. Um, I have a scheme, uh, uh, a kind of a, uh, not a scheme, but a, uh, a, uh, a yeah, I guess a color scheme, I guess if you will. Um, I usually keep my acoustic guitars a certain color of blue. I usually keep my electrics uh, a darker shade of blue. So all my guitars are a shade of blue, right? But depending on the guitar is a different shade of blue. My bass, I usually keep purple because it's kind of funky. Uh, bass, uh, kick drums or the drum kit in general, I keep it a uh, kind of a golden color, kind of like a cymbal color, right? Um, for pianos and pads, I keep it like a, a green. Um, and then if I have like a click track and stuff like that, I'll, I'll, I'll keep that kind of like a red color and that's how I kind of go about it keeps your session on organized when you have a default session or when you drag your clips in from another like if you have a bunch of audio clips and you're dragging them in to your Pro Tools session to um, start a session like editing and, and mixing wise um, it's gonna default to like a dark blue for every single track and in order to get yourself organized um, uh, putting a color on them is actually the best way to go because then you can actually see like oh greens I know these are pads and pianos this is what I need to edit right versus like a bunch of the same color tracks um, you always want to work uh, efficiently and in a centered around being the fastest at when it comes to time right time is everything time is money and uh, you want to do everything the quickest way possible um, that is pretty much it in terms of the basics of getting a session started. Uh, you can see right here I have these little markers. There's a little section up here, right? And you can actually, I have markers, tempo, minutes and seconds. And this is kind of like where you can be even more organized. So right here you can see I have intro, verse 1, verse 2 pre-chorus, chorus, turnaround, bridge, etc., outro. This shows me where in the song each part of the song is. So if I need to go back to the chorus, I know where the chorus is, right? It's right here. And then 
I know where to go from there, right? Um, so that is pretty much the basics of knowing kind of each section within Pro Tools. The next video I want to focus on uh, can go deeper into the session. Um, we could probably even start a new session using the same track, but maybe uh, starting from completely uh, ground zero where we can EQ and go through all that together as well. I would love to do that. But I hope this was a decent uh, kind of refresher course on how Pro Tools operates, what the windows look like, how to toggle between the windows, kind of what each section uh, uh, offers. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed it, please hit like, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. I do want to create more content like this. And uh, I would just really appreciate your participation and your help in growing this channel and this community. And uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and take care.